So, the next topic is about uh, the packet switching system. So, this is I will continue from wherever I left last time. Okay. So, we want to implement a packet switch and one of the possible options which I thought of is going to have a we will going to have a cross bar. Cross bar will have certain number of inputs and will have certain number of outputs. Usually, they will be same in number and we are going to assume that packets are coming on each one of these lines and they are all synchronized in time. So, these are these are the packets which have arrived. on each one of these. There may be situations that there is no packet on certain line that is also possible. So, what happens the first slot will come, then second slot, third slot that is the input which is coming in inside the switch. We have an interface card sitting on each one of these ports. These interface cards will read the packet at least the packet header. Usually, every packet will have a header as I have told earlier. So, this is when this axis is time. So, header will always will be received first. There is a possibility of a trailer, but we are not bothered about the trailer part. Okay. This is not a store and forward, so we will not do CRC checking in this case. So, if there is an error happen, this may be misrouted. There is a possibility of even doing as a CRC checking, but then whole packet has to be received first here, CRC has to be verified and then only the routing will happen. So, there is going to be one slot delay which will happen at interface board in that case. Okay. So, usually delay will be for reading of this only header part and then there is some processing time, worst case processing time this much delay will be required. So, we have to introduce that delay here. I am showing it by loop. Okay, this can be a kind of a memory which you can put with the which is going to have a still more a better time granularity or it can be a delay line. It is going to be fiber optic system, it is going to be usually a delay line. Now, all these interface information this will be always after the interface card once the header has been analyzed, has been read out. Okay. So, these are all through the interface thing, delay part that is where the packets will come. Now, this has to all come to the central com control processor. This control processor will then decide after doing appropriate computation that which cross points have to be activated. So, these are the cross points. So, cross points will be chosen. Like this. So, this is going to now do a what we call row and column control thing. For this, so they will be activating just before the slot arrives. So, usually there will be a guard band time between two packets. So, packet actually is not going to fill up the complete slot, it is going to be only part of it because you require a guard band time for the activation of cross point and then another time guard band time for again uh, what is called releasing of the cross point and setting up of a new cross point. Guard band we call it a G U because it is in temporal space, it is not in frequency space. In F D M for example, if you have spectrums of various frequency, F, uh, frequency division multiplex signals, you always keep some gap, so that there is no cross talk. This is also known as guard band. In fact, this term because this is a frequency band, so guard band looks like, but in time there is nothing like a band actually. 
that is a guard time, but we can also call it guard bend time both are fine. So, you require a gap between them that has to be kept when you are designing the system, but usually whenever you do analysis we assume all this operations can be done at almost infinite pace. So, you need not actually have a guard bend on paper it is fine theoretically, but in real life you need to have it actually ok. That will depend on your all your circuitry, the time which is required here, uh, what is going to be tolerance is in activating and deactivating the cross points ok. Because remember activation also means you have to first of all increase do the row and then column and the row has to go down and column has to be kept up for one slot period when the cross point is active and column has to go down ok. So, these just take time they cannot happen instantaneously. So, as for this now this packets will be passed on to the output and this scheme is going to work fine so far each packet is going to have a separate destination no two packets will have the same destination. If this condition somehow can be satisfied then this is going to work fine this switch is going to work fine and if you can uh, this is what is known as uh, this is a basic simple switch actually, but real life the switch will not work this way. There is always a possibility because the packets which are arriving are coming at there independently at, at each input port. So, there is a possibility that you will have more than one packet coming in and they want to go to the same destination. In that situation what has to be done? So, one possibility is that uh, in this kind of scenario is uh, basically what will happen is if there is these two wants to go to for example, this for remaining of them unique combinations are actually ok. okay for all of them they will they are not having any conflict with anybody they are going through only these two want to go here, but I cannot pass I cannot keep these two on. In row I can actually have multiple cross point active, but not in the column ok. So, when you have multiple cross point active this way it is a multicasting. So, since this cannot be done, so what you will do is only one packet will be allowed to go through, second one will be actually in this case has to be sent to the blank one or you do not activate that cross point actually. So, second one will be read out, but it will not be going anywhere remaining on this line and it will die out actually. It cannot pass through the switch it is lost. So, that could be one strategy. So, we will actually essentially make an estimate of the throughput maximum throughput which can be achieved in such a scenario ok. How do you choose the victim packet? You have to decide an algorithm. If you say I am going to give one a higher priority and two a lower priority always choose the one first and drop the two. If all ports are having equal priority choose anything randomly and let it go. If packets are lost is the higher layer which will take care of it. They have to keep track if the packet is lost I have to do a retransmission ok. There will be some data link control or flow control mechanism which will be sitting in there. Window flow control will be there which will take care of the retransmission. Now, that is one reason why the packets can get lost. Now, there can be an alternative strategy. We can say ok, uh, now before actually going to the alternative strategy I can just quickly make an estimate of what will be the throughput for this particular thing ok. So, a packet is going to be there on a line is with probability p. So, that is the loading factor basically utilization factor of every line every input line it will have a packet with probability p and there are n lines so n by n switch I am assuming. So, this can go to any one of these packets with any one of these lines with equal probability. Usually what will happen again there is a input 1 and output 1 are connected to the same node. These are unidirectional line, but actual links are bidirectional. So, it will not be choosing at least the output 1, it will always be choosing out of the remaining n minus 1 ok. So, you will have with p raise power n minus 1 probability 
the packet will be choosing any one of these, which actually implies that now if you look at an output. P is the probability that packet is there and then with equal probability it is going to be directed to have any of the outgoing ports except the outgoing port corresponding to itself. Okay, each line, each input line is always paired with an output line because both pair will be connected to a node or another switch always. So, you do not send a packet to yourself actually in the loop that is not possible. So, that I am not uh, that I am actually precluding from possibility. So, take an output. So, how many packets will be directed to probability that i packets will be directed to it I have to estimate that. So, from here you can get there are simple combinatorics actually from there you can get it. So, probability that a packet from a line will come to this is given by p divided by n minus 1. It can receive only packets from all other lines except the line which corresponds input line which corresponds to itself. This is the same situation which you discussed earlier that if one is talking to two then two is also talking to one. Yes. No, you will never send a packet to yourself. <coughs> but in yes. circuit switching we will discuss uh, that crossbar uh, when you discuss. No, we never do a looping. So, there I am sending a packet to you, you are sending it to me, that is a different situation. You are sending a packet that may come through a different route altogether to me, okay. each packet is going independently, but when I send a packet to a switch, it should not be sent to an outgoing port which is again back connected to me. So, my packet itself will come back to me. In that scenario, your voice was not coming back to you, it was other person's voice which was coming to you. So, this actually means that uh, i packets will be coming to this particular node in one single slot will be directed what is the probability of that actually. So, that probability will be p divided by n minus 1. So, from remain from out of the n minus 1 possible input i of them will direct it to me this is with this probability. Okay. The remaining one of them will not direct it to me is this probability n minus 1 minus i and this will happen in combinations of n minus 1 c i. So, that will be this probability, probability of receiving i packets So, even if you receive anything which is when you will receive no packet in a slot, when i is equal to 0, if you receive i is equal to 1 or i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, you will always get only one packet remaining will be dropped. So, if I sum up all the probabilities which goes from p 1, one packet received 2 till p n minus 1, I will only always get one packet, there is a probability of achieving getting at least one packet at the outgoing port. So, outgoing line will have in a time slot with this probability one packet there, so that will be the throughput actually and this is nothing but 1 minus p 0. So, what is p 0 from here we can estimate this will be n minus 1 c 0, this will be nothing but 1. So, I can remove this, this is 0, so this will be 1. So, this is 1 minus p divided by n minus 1, n minus 1 under full load condition actually. In every slot there is a packet, the packets are coming all the time, p is equal to 1, then we will make an estimate from there. So, that will be the maximum throughput. So, I can divide by this by p minus p n minus p and this will be nothing but
in this in limit when m goes to 0 infinity this will become e raise power minus p. So, I want 1 minus p 0 to be estimated. So, 1 minus e raise power minus p is what is going to be the throughput s per line throughput per line will be this much. So, this will get a maximum value when p is maximum that is a negative term actually remember. So, I have to minimize on that since the exponent is negative. So, I have to maximize over p. So, p gets a maximum value which is. So, from here actually you can plot how the throughput increases with p okay, and this will achieve you can plot this s this per line, throughput per line as p goes from 0 to 1. So, e raise power minus p is this. So, this value is 1 over e. So, this is what will be the curve for s. So, when p is 1, so initially throughput will increase as probability increases, but then when p goes to 1, it means full loading condition at the input. Put that value, it is 1 over 1 by e, which is going to be I think 0.532. I think this value is 0.532 or something. Okay. So, but this is what you will get as the maximum. Okay. So, far this policy is fine, but I need to improve because there is a maximum throughput limit and I will also have a loss. Even if p is equal to 1, roughly about uh, more than 40 percent the packet will actually be lost. This is not a good switch in that sense. Ideally, if I actually have even under high load conditions, low load conditions it is fine, but under high load conditions I ideally would like to have something which we uh, which achieves almost 95 percent or 96 percent probability and as less number of packets should be dropped as possible. Then of course, we will be interested in what will be the delay in the uh, packet being transmitted out. Okay. So, now let us look at the strategy for buffering. Uh, what we did is uh, we were trying to build up crossbar switch I have taken because that is what we know about and want to build up a packet switch with this. We have taken at the input and we have assumed fixed slots. All slots at all the inputs are synchronized and I am actually neglecting all the delay and everything. I am assuming that header can be process control, processor can process almost at infinite speed and can apply the control action. In real life, there will be some amount of delay after this header has been detected. There will be some guard band which has to be provided between two uh, packets, two consecutive packets and two consecutive slots. So, that this action of setting up everything can actually take place. Okay, packet will only be transmitted when the cross point is connected, not when it is under the process of connection. Okay. So, based on this the various cross points are set and you get the output that was the first thing which we did. Secondly, I thought okay, let me do a very simple analysis, there is no buffering here, packets just keep on coming whatever comes in the slots we just transmit. If there is more than one packet trying to go to one single output, we have no option, but to allow only one and rest everything will be dropped. Okay. I am not worried about, I am actually taking randomly any packet will be selected and going out, but there can be a priority disciplines where you can say if the one and two are going to contend, packet from one will be given priority and it will go out, packet from two will not go out. Because remember, I have not still estimated the probability that your packet will be lost. I am only worried about the throughput part. Throughput is how many packets per unit slots are going out from an outgoing port. So, whatever is true for one port has to be true for any other port. Okay. So, under that assumption, then we estimated what is going to the probability of having a packet here from an incoming line. So, the with probability p, the packets will be there in this slot this will be directed to remaining n minus 1 with probability 1 over n minus 1 equally likely chance uniform routing. There is one doubt sir, the probability of p should be uh, 1 by n. 
probability and because equal probability n lines are there so it will be 1 by n or p1 p by n these are rival rate p is a rival uh, probability of having a packet on one single line each line is independent if you want all the lines to have a packet that probability will be p raised power n only one packet one line has the packet that probability is p all other lines does not have 1 minus p raised power n minus 1 so in general i packets will be present here okay that probability will be given by p raised power i and because they can be in any order any combinatorial so it is n c i n 1 minus p n minus i that is a probability that i packets will be there in a slot at all the inputs of a switch. So, p is a probability of having a packet on one line the same probability exists for second line also third line also the case which you are taking it will be 1 by n there is only one packet which, which is going to come it has to go on any one of these lines then it will become 1 by n but we are not taking all inputs are independent they are not dependent on each other so once we get a probability that this guy will get a packet from one line say this one so that probability is p divided by n minus 1 the input which is corresponding to this output port i am not bothered about that anyway when i take limit n goes to infinity that n minus 1 does not matter you can actually observe that I have used that thing. So, uh, getting i packets from various combinations directed to only this port, this probability has to be that i packets have been directed out of n minus 1 which could have come to this port. The one which is coming at the corresponding input port corresponding to this outgoing port will never come to this. So, that I have excluded. So, n minus 1 c i, there is a probability it is being directed here, i of them remaining what will happen? They have not come to you. So, it has to be 1 minus p by n minus 1 the remaining stuff simple binomial thing and then of course, we say let us find out what is the probability that no packet will come to me because either you find out each one of them in sum all this or you do 1 minus of p 0 both are actually same. So, we have found out p 0. So, when you put i is equal to 0 this will become 1 this term goes away 1 minus p by n minus 1 will become this. I have multiplied divided by in the exponent by minus p and when I take a limit n goes to infinity or n minus 1 goes to infinity this will become nothing but exponential. So, it becomes exponential uh, sorry this limit actually should be put here you will get e raise power minus p. So, what is the probability you will get at least one packet remaining will be dropped I am not bothered, but I will have one packet in that slot. So, if I have 1000 packets, how many packets will come? So, this will be 1 minus p 0 multiplied by 1000, those many packets per unit slot will be going out. Okay. So, I have put that value, it becomes 1 minus e raise power minus p. Of course, e raise power minus p will be shown by the <coughs> line which is decaying and the growing line is what will be your throughput, 1 minus of that. So, as p increases your throughput will increase, but it will saturate it cannot never be higher than this when p is 1 which is 1 over 1 minus e 1 minus 1 over e I think it is roughly 0 0.58 or something it must be around that value I think. So, you can compute that and then verify. Okay. So, there is a quite large number of packets which will not pass through even when p is 1 p is 1 is saturation case when every input is going to have a new incoming packet in every time slot that is what is p is equal to 1 packet is under full load under complete saturation you will saturate to this 40 percent of the packets will be lost. So, this switch uh, we will be happy, but we are going to have very high loss rate I have to minimize on this loss rate that is a question now how to do it. So, we have to solve this particular problem. So, I have now moved from cr simple cross bar which was a circuit switch element that is where we have learnt it and we have converted into a packet switch, but my throughput performance is limited. I have to now move one step ahead further improve the performance. Now, how we will improve the performance? So, what we can do? 
we can do buffering, some kind of buffering can be done. Okay. So, let us see if we can do the buffering, but where to do the buffering? Now, question is this. Some people can say, okay, what I can do is I have this crossbar. Now, I am crossbar outputs I am showing on this side and this side, not in the bottom. So, where I should put the buffer? So, there are four lines, for example, this 4 by 4, where I should put the buffer. I cannot insert a buffer inside a crossbar as of now. Crossbar is a cross point. In every slot, I just snap certain cross points, and this snapped cross point sets will keep on changing in every time slot. So, where to put the buffer? Can I put it at the output? No, we cannot do it. Why? Switching more than one packet come at the input, they will be lost. Because there will be only one packet coming at output, and that anyway you will always have a chance to transmit. So, this buffer will always remain empty. Packet comes, it goes out. Packets are being lost here because the contention is happening here. So, common sense will tell I think I can have the buffering here. I need not have buffer at the output. But once you do this, now if that packets are coming and they are being read out synchronously from the buffer and each packet is of fixed length, again that is assumption here. Okay. Now, if there are two packets at the head of the line, this is known as line, this is head of the line is the first position in the queue and they both want to go to same outgoing port. So, what I will do is I will just read one of the packets and this packet will go out this one. This packet I will not read, this will remain in the buffer. These packets will be read because they are not contending, so they will be cleared. But in the next time slot, this is empty, so new packet will come. So, a new packet will be coming here. Next time slot, a new packet will come, this will be in the back next time slot this packet will come a new packet will come again if there is a contention okay between this packet and this, this there can be many other things which can happen so contention will always be looked into only in the this front packets the back packets we are not bothered as of now So, again if there is a contention, I will choose the maximum number of packets which can be transmitted. Okay. And then of course, once you have decided on that, maximum number of packets which need to be transmitted, some packets which are cannot go through because there is a contention, they will again be buffered. So, this buffer can keep on filling and keep on going out actually depending on this. Now, there is a problem actually in this case, there can be a scenario, there are variations on this now schemes. I can have a case like this, if I look at the front of the packets, this is a current situation for example. This is a current situation, there are two packets buffered here, one here, one here, one here. And if I allow only the packets which are at the head end, there might be contention between these two. If there is a contention, I may allow this one. So, there are two packets in the buffer. But if I take this combination, this one, there is no contention, all four of them can be transmitted simultaneously because there is no contention among that, that pair. But since I am using first in first out discipline here, all the queues, I will not be able to transmit this packet even when this could have been adjusted actually. 
this would have improved the throughput. Now, this kind of blocking, this is blocking is not because of switch, this blocking is happening because of the Q, somebody is there ahead of you sitting and he does not want to go through in this particular slot. You could have gone, but uh, you are not actually allowed to go. This is known as head of the line blocking H O L. So, this is a one variant of buffering, this will certainly improve, but this has head of the line blocking problem actually. So, next variation of this is uh, you are going to have a situation where these buffers are not managed as a single queue, they can always be managed as a hybrid multiple queue actually. For each input port, I can have 1, 2, 3, depending on because they are n ports this is known as a kind of a different structure. So, packets which are coming in are buffered into <coughs> multiple buffer corresponding to each output. Okay. So, this one at each input port you will have this particular thing scenario. So, there is no head of the line, there is no first in first out. For each output you maintain a separate queue. So, earlier you were having n queue. Now, each queue consists of n queues, so you require n square queues, that is the only thing. n into n minus 1 queues technically will be required. You, this guy will be maintaining a queue for all outgoing ports except the output port which is for which corresponds to itself. So, n minus 1 queues here, n minus 1 here, n minus 1 here, n minus 1 here. So, n into n minus 1 queues will be maintained. Advantage is that when you look at the slot, you will now choose the combination in such a way. So, because for example, there was a contention here, but I can then look at the queue number 2 and there is no contention. I can always find out a combination such that the maximum number of packets which can go to the outgoing port. That is a maximal match problem actually. So, if you do not do maximal match, you can actually you might have less number of packets possible actually. So, by just choosing appropriate combinations, you choose any one of these. So, one of these n minus 1 has to be chosen in each input port. You choose such that the maximum number of mapping can happen to the outgoing ports. So, in every slot you are maximizing on the throughput. So, once you do that, then you will achieve the maximum throughput actually and head of the line blocking can be taken care of, but you have to additionally now implement multiple queues and a separate algorithm has to be implemented inside the switch. So, here whenever a new packet comes, it will go to each one of the end queues in maximum. Uh, no, if packet will come only at one port. Hmm. So, it is directed to only one of the n outgoing ports, yeah. it will go in that particular queue. Okay. So, then who decides in which queue will be? Yeah, priority is a problem here. <laughs> See, question is you do not know that when there is no conflict, for example, which one of the maps will pick. Technically, you should always go for first in first out. So, this kind of queue actually is not required, you can the bet better strategy will be only thing it is slightly complicated to manage, but this way if you manage it is far simpler. But how many interface ports will have this switch? Only one interface, hmm? one interface <coughs> is here, one packet will come and it will be directed to one of the uh, ports. So, single buffer I am now splitting into n buffers. So, one queue I am splitting into multiple queues. In this multiple buffers are if it is using round robin laying then we actually it is. There is a complication, I should actually always the delay is the issue. One of the important thing is not only I should maximize the throughput, I should also minimize on the delay of transfer. The problem is you get a packet for this particular thing, it went to packet number 2, then the next one the packet number 1 has come. Now, only for packet on the only for output 1 the packets are keep on coming in and if by your strategy you are always choosing 1, this guy will keep on waiting indefinitely, your first in first out discipline will not be maintained. So, this same problem can be happening first in first out? First in first out you are going to have FIFO, this guy. No, no. 
at the side of the line blocking lap. It's true. The second uh, first packet is first uh, in first line packet has come and second line there is a contention. Okay. Then again the first line you have given the priority to first line, not second line. No, you choose randomly between them. Randomly. You can choose randomly or first time has been given, the second time you will start from the second one. And third time you will start, you can do a round robin. Otherwise, there will be a start. Right? Because they will they are also maintaining in queue. No. If first and second was contending, first one was given last time in last slot the priority. This slot, if there is another condition, I will start from two for giving the priority. So next time I will start from three. So I will keep on doing round robin, that is also possible. Well, there are various possibilities in the switch. It is not that it is very simple trivial thing and there is only one possible solution. Again, how is splitting the multiple brokers? Single brokers is calculating the… Yeah, I am saying that at each input there are, at each input port there are n buffers. When a packet arrives, there is one packet arriving in a slot. Depending on the outgoing port, I will put it in one of these queues. For output port, there is a queue. So, n, n square complexity will be there for number of queues. And then it is like I have to now map onto one to n possible outgo outgoing things. I found out one can be mapped there, uh, then two can be mapped here. Okay. Uh, so I have to find out maximum mass where the maximum number of packets can be transferred in a slot. That is a maximal mass problem. The complexity of the switch as a whole will increase in this such a case. Yeah, com complexity of processing is increasing. Because you need a algorithm. See, there is something called buffer complexity which also comes into picture for the same throughput performance. See, so, this is not same as circuit switching because of this. Circuit switching you are only worried about. Uh, computational complexity is one thing. If you have to do rearrangements or try to find out a path. And second thing, number of cross points. A number of cross point complexity is not the issue. Here, mostly it is the processing which is the problem. A size grows, processing complexity will increase. In this case, again, I think it will increase quite fast actually, it is not desirable. Ideally, I want everything to be O n or even lower than that. Every kind of complexity should be this or lower than this. The tendency of the switch is always going to have something O n square. You usually will not find anything greater than O n square complexity. That will be rare phenomenon. If that is there, I think that is a really bad design. So, you will usually are going to have something in between this. Something in between this is O n log 2 n. You have seen all this I think already. Remember you, you have got all this stuff. O n log 2 n square kind of thing. There are many combinations which exist in between these ranges. If you can get something better than this, wonderful. If you can get O lo log 2 n, that is still better because that is better than this O n. So, all kind of computational complexity, time required to make the decision, the delay part, the throughput performance, the switch cross points which are required. As n grows, what happens to that? And that is what is complexity. So, this has to be somewhere in between this. And closer to this, I think it is acceptable. If it can be even lower than this, it is still better. Uh, this uh, will be 1 to n minus 1. Hmm? n minus 1. Yeah, it has to be 1 to n minus 1 actually. One of them will not be used, one will be defunct. If it is a height slot, height input port, then the height buffer will not is not required. You will not be buffering for yourself. You will never have any packet directed to yourself. Now, I can further improve. This was one possibility to remove the head of the line blocking. So, usually, and of course, there is a maximal match issue. That is another complication. So, people thought of an output queued switch, but we know that output queued switch is going to be difficult to implement. So, how that can be done? It is not that it cannot be, it can be done. What you do is you have four ports one packet coming in every slot per line. So, there are four packets coming in. In one time slot, if somehow, because technically it is like a memory which is there, one packet being coming in stored. 
while reading out the packet if I read it at 4 times faster speed. So, switch internally is working at not at the line rate, but 4 times the line rate. Okay. I am taking an extreme case. So, line rate internally or internal speed is 4 times. In this case, then all 4 packets I can read, I can analyze their header and all 4 of them can be pushed out to an outgoing port in one time slot. So, you will get all 4 packets here, but in one time slot, because line rates are assumed to be same on both sides, only one packet can go out on the line. What you will do with the remaining 3? You can put a buffer here. So, all 4 packets will be queued up here, remaining buffers will remain empty. Remaining buffers will remain empty actually in this case. Now, this speed up of 4 times allows this thing to happen, but who said the speed up always has to be of 1 or 4? I can have a speed up of 2 also who stops. So, if I have a speed up factor of 2, what will happen? So far 2 packets are contending, I can push both of them to an outgoing port. The moment there are 3 which are contending, I cannot do that, one of them have to be dropped. So, two of them will be pushed out, one of them will be dropped. Again, some policy decision has to be there regarding this mechanism. Now, this I am now moving to an hybrid approach. If I want to even forget this particular loss, I can also have a input buffering. So, I can even have buffers here. So, when the speed of factor k so, maximum value of k is k is always greater than or equal to 1 or less than equal to n, where n is number of ports. Actually, n minus 1 is good enough again. I have written n, but n minus 1 is good enough. And if I am using somewhere k which is not n and which is greater than 1, I also require input buffers. If I want a lossless packet, there is no loss which is happening inside the switch, lossless switch. So, this is a hybrid configuration. Here the input side is a normal FIFO. The input side can be a normal FIFO or can be, or can be this kind of system. So, there are various combinations now which have come because of in this hybrid thing. So, in this hybrid combination there will be no loss. In reality, there is no loss in when all buffers are full then what you will do? Packets have to be lost in that case. So, if you are having infinite buffers, there need not be any loss, but there is a fundamental principle that when lambda over mu which is rho for a q, this is a mu is the rate, lambda is the arrival rate, uh, what we call rho 1 minus rho is what is the average q length L bar, this actually explodes and goes to infinity when rho goes to 1 you require an infinite buffer. So, if your buffer is only limited to some, some value, this is the maximum throughput which can maximum load which can be taken up. That is the average value remember. So, statistically because this is an average for this row, this is the average value. So, statistically there can be q which can exceed that average value and if you are having your buffer only till this average value, packets will be dropped in that case. So, actual average buffer capacity which is going to be there is going to be lower. So, there is a probability distribution which happens for the q occupancy. So, next step I think uh, after the examination we will look into the performance of the input q system when head of the line blocking actually happens. With that and if I remove the head of the line blocking, then what happens that we have already done 1 over 1 minus e. So, I will compare the situation for head of the line blocking and without head of when I am actually dropping the packet if there is a contention, these two scenarios and then we will also analyze the output queued system and delays also for that. K is a speed of factor, k is equal to 1 was taken here when we did that full throughput analysis. That will be for valid for both input as well as output. K 
is the internal speed of factor. K actually means in one slot I can read two packets and push it to an outgoing buffer. If k is n, I can read all k n packets and they all can be read out so to a single outgoing port. K means k time function we are reading and we, k time function we are, we are writing also. also. Yeah. But this both can be made. Switches, in, switches internally is working k times at higher speed than the line rates. See, line rates are same. Line rates have some r. r packets per slot. It is a one packet per slot. My switch can internally handle k packets per slot. We cannot break it. Like reading is something different to speed or writing is at some something some different speed. No, they are at different speed. <coughs> but both are same, no? Yeah. Clear. Yeah. yeah. How come? This and this, their line rates are going to be same always. You can if you want to do that, you can do that. No. Then you certainly require a buffer, you cannot work without buffers. You are reading a packet, a packet is being pushed inside in one slot time slot. Here you might be reading out a packet in two time slots. That is the case which I look That is possible, but I think that is usually never used. The input and output pair, port pair is always related to a common entity on the other end. Within two, as two for example, switching nodes, this output is connected to this input and this output is connected to this input. There is always a pair, there is always a bidirectional line. I am showing unidirectional incoming and unidirectional outgoing port on the left and right side, but that is fine. But uh, as far as actual systems are concerned, they are always a pair. They cannot be unidirectional. So, with that I think I close today and we will move ahead from here for the analysis part.